How would you describe the culture of your organization? We have uh, a lot of colleagues around the globe. So we are working in different time zones and we're working with different cultures that are all marching to the same beat of our drum and it's uh, making it matter to our clients but also to our employees. So a lot of communication in person but also over the telephone and over technology that allows you to communicate with your colleagues that may be like in the UK, they might be down in Australia, that's a 12 hour time difference. So we're collaborating with those uh, because our world never stops and our hackers never stop so we're always having to deal with you know the world with our clients making sure their businesses are successful so it's a lot about being available being uh, created also being able to articulate and communicate with your colleagues and we all face the same uh, same situations in, in our world and allowing them to make it matter to themselves but also to our clients and our customers. You know, we're kind of a standard small company compared to a lot of these big folks up here. You know, we, we are in several, not too many rooms. We talked on one another quite a bit. Um, for us, it's all about collaboration though. You know, we really spend a lot of time helping one another um, and we go across the organization. There's a lot of different needs that we have from SEO to writing to um, web design, programming, you know, all these different groups work together. And if one day somebody needs help with something, well, I'll jump on board and we'll help with one of those. So collaboration is really a huge thing for us being able to work well with another, help with one another, and learn a lot. You know, you need to be able to do a lot of things in, in, in our organization at least, so. Okay. I think it's really important that there's uh, a nice level of camaraderie between team members. You, if you get in and you're, you're a bunch of robots uh, sitting at your desk, <laughs> pounding on a keyboard, it doesn't make for a really satisfying work experience. So being able to razz each other and uh, joke with each other is really an essential part of uh, of a business environment uh, that I like to see. I also believe in getting in and rolling up your sleeves and getting the work done. Uh, and, I, and I want that to be instilled uh, in everybody who works for me or uh, who I work with. The, the foundational piece that I say, uh, that I would say would be a differentiator for AMX is um, I, IT is not a service provider. <coughs> IT is a business partner. So all of our businesses, all the other arms of the business, whether it's finance, marketing, operations, manufacturing, what have you, they bring IT to the table as an equal business partner in the solutions that we provide. There's no other organization in any uh, business around the world that can automate uh, the workforce like we can. So we're, we're a, a workforce multiplier, <coughs> and our business gets that, and they, uh, they provide us the the wherewithal to, to be at the table with them to make those decisions. So I think if you guys going into the workforce, go in with the understanding that I'm not just some guy or gal in the back gonna push, um, that's critical. If you believe that you're a business partner, then you will be. I'm the guy on the receiving end of the consulting. And I'd like to speak to what he said because a lot of times I get hired to go into a company that's broke, don't know what's wrong. And so when I get their teams together, it's like, I say, okay, and they got, oh, I'm the developer. I'm the switch guy. Okay, oh, wait a minute, oh, you know. So what he was talking to is that you have to not only have your specialty, but be multi-talented enough to know the rest of those team members. And, and accept that responsibility that you might be handed, saying, okay, boss, I'll take it. Now let me go buy the switch guy a cup of coffee and see what we can do to fix it. <laughs> okay? So it's very important that, that, and we're gonna talk about this here in a few minutes, but it's very important that you have the qualifications and everything like that. But a lot of it is those soft skills moving in between the groups that you have to deal with. That's something that you have to learn. In some cases it might be taught. Uh, this guy being one of my clients, I know where to walk in with him and get out of his hair when I need to. Okay, so uh, we'll go with that for right. Okay. What does a typical uh, career path, career ladder look like with, St with State Farm? One of the benefits that we have of being such a large organization is that 
you can have so many different career paths within one company. So State Farm's slogan is actually one company, many careers, and that's something we truly believe in. So you can take somebody who's been at the company for four years or somebody who's been there for 34 years. They're gonna have extremely different career paths, but could also end up in the same area. So um, that's definitely one of our um, key points of an organization of our size is having all those different paths that you can take up in one company. On the IT side, if you start as an entry-level analyst position in IT, there are multiple career paths. You could stay in that position and progress up through different promotional and different um, jobs but stay at the analyst level and still make a great salary and have a great career and be very deep in your knowledge or you can choose to go into management and we have two different level paths in management in IT. We have the technical path and then the management, managing people and project kind of path. So on the technical side, that's where it leads into um, an architect position and a lead architect position and there, we even have um, all the way up to AVPs in IT that are in that architectural technical realm. And then on the what I call management side or the people side, which is the path I took, um, you can get you know first line manager all the way up to AVP uh, in that path. But for those that don't choose to go into management, there is still a strong career path, and we have many jobs. I've been in, as you've heard, 26 years in the IT department at State Farm, and I don't know, maybe 10 or 15 different positions that I've had, uh, all in IT, different areas, lots of change, so you can move around within IT, or as Katie said, you can move around within the company. Many people start in IT, and they end up in a completely different department, department in leadership in those departments. The other thing I wanted to mention is that we are very strong and have a very strong culture in mentoring. We believe in mentoring fully. There's a whole mentoring program, a training to go through, that mentors go through, that mentees go through, and company will match you up with a mentor. Um, whether it's a mentor you want to aspire to uh, progress or you want to move to a new department, I could mentor with somebody in HR if I had a desire to move over to the HR department out of IT. So. Um, there's a lot of opportunities, and as Katie said, with a company our size, the opportunities are endless. There are multiple paths within, within IT. Uh, you can be what we call a service delivery manager, and a service delivery manager has five primary roles. They do quality assurance, they do business analysis, they do the project management, and they own the customer relationship. So they do the customer support and customer relationship building. The reason why we have service delivery uh, managers specifically is to tighten that, that role between business leaders and IT. Uh, if if uh, you're the person who's getting the requirements from the business and then you translate those in te technical specifications, <coughs> hand them off to the development group, the development group then develops them, hands them back to you to quality assure, and then you get to pass that off to the customer again for, for user acceptance testing, it's, it's a great handshake because that one person has the whole, the whole line of technology <coughs> integration at their fingertips. And it makes for a consistent message because typically what happens, especially in all the other organizations I've been in, is they're very distinct teams. One team begets another team, which then begets another team, and they have a very myopic focus. Hey, it passed QA. I'm going to throw it over the fence. That's not really the, the uh, spirit of uh, teamwork that I was trying to foster. So I, I built those different roles into one specific role uh, to deliver that value for our customers. There's another group called the ADM team, or Application Development Management Team. And these guys are responsible for the coding. So they do all the uh, database design. They code to all, wh whatever products we have primarily our ERP system is JD Edwards and we also have uh, Microsoft Dynamics as a CRM solution but we have 115 other uh, applications that we develop against uh, and and it's from mobile application development to anything is it's all it's all there for you to be able to tap into uh, the difference uh, between larger organizations and a medium organization is uh, you're required to wear more hats. You, you, we, when I was at Bank of America, 
many of the people that I report to me, they, they just did one thing. <laughs> hey, look, my job is to move an iPad from here to there. <laughs> and that's good. I mean, I mean, I mean, hey, don't mess it up. It's my job. <laughs> Do it again. Uh, so, um, and, and that's fine. If you really like to be a one-trick pony and, and IT is not your thing, and you just go to do the job to do a job and your real life is uh, playing in a band at the local bar, then do, that's the job to get. I'm just saying, <laughs> because you can kind of disengage your brain, check out and, and, and drift along in the ether of, of the workforce. Uh, however, if you want to grow and engage and really learn and aspire, then you're going to want a role that you have multiple and some of these other organizations have, have that capability. And you learn so much in so few years uh, that you'll blow by many of the other people who have just moved an iPad from here to here. Mm -hmm. it, it's actually astounding. The last role is infrastructure and network operations. And, and th there's a couple of different roles in there. One is a systems manager. These guys are the people who build the VMs and, and the systems and, and build out the hardware. Uh, and then there's a network engineering group, and then the network engineering group uh, take care of the worldwide global network, whether that's wireless, whether it's wired, and then there's a tele telephony engineering group. And I think one of, the, one of the interesting pieces that I find most fascinating and most desirable, the uh, roles that are most desirable are people who know networking, but also know telephony. Those people are rare. <laughs> and so if you find when you get out in the workforce that you have a knack for telephony, uh, that this is that moment in life, and I, I, Jerry Maguire, show me the money, that <laughs> is your money, right? <laughs> because there are so few of those people, uh, it really is a show me the money kind of a role. The <laughs> government called me and said, uh, we want you to go build the, rebuild what we blew up in Iraq. <coughs> <laughs> because I had Siemens telephony training, I knew Siemens switches, they knew me, and that sort of thing. But he's right. That's kind of, and, that, and I'm going to I'm going to go over some of like the top 12 qualifications that people are looking for out there. And if you have one, that's good. But if you can have two or three, you just built your toolkit even more, okay? And one of the ones that I always get asked for are, are project managers, PMPs, okay? Uh, I'm a CCIE, me and Moses went through school together. <laughs> uh, so, uh, CCIE, CCNA, Cisco certified, internet engineer, or network engineer, You've got now, there's some certification out there called Red Hat Certified, certified Engineer. Red Hat is coming on big. PCP, VMware Certified Professional. CompTIA, A+. If you, can, if you can start out and get an A-plus certification for knowing your way around a piece of hardware, get it. Oracle DBA, huge, huge. Information Technology Infrastructure Library ITIL. Get that certification. They actually, I kind of also looked at what they offer here, and you can just kind of check it off and go here. We'll talk about Microsoft Certified IT Professional, uh, MC, uh, what is there, MCSC. You've got the client, when it's client, when it's server, SQL server, exchange server, SharePoint server, link server, and he'd probably take people that have <coughs> one or two of those server certifications if you planned on working hard. <laughs> MCTS, Microsoft Certified Technology Specialist, that's a new one that hadn't been out too long and then Microsoft Certified Systems Engineer. One of the biggest needs that I'm personally having within the industry is people who know mobile app development 
Uh, it is a, a transformational technology that's impacting us around the world. And uh, I have 18 locations that I have to sponsor multi-language. And uh, having a multi-app, uh, our multi-language uh, app web mobile developer would be amazing. And they just don't exist. Maybe I have to look in a different country. If you're a router jockey, and you know the gazindas and the gazadas of the router, <laughs> it means you know some Unix. Okay? So go out there and grab that Unix. At the same time, look at what they have on the development side of the house. And one of the things I'll speak to is never, never be comfortable with where you're sitting now. Okay? Always look out there. What's the next thing? And the companies that I've worked for and the companies sitting at that table, at this table, they want you to be that, that person that looks out there. So when they're saying, oh no, and I don't know, I'm sure State Farm has it, but we've got to get an application that they can use on the phone and they've got to be able to do this. You know, I do that. Okay? You just added value to yourself and value to the company. So never, never just sit and I'll use myself as an example. My license number, certifications license number with, with Cisco is like 174. <laughs> I've been around since the big iron days. And I let it lapse. I was whining to Mac here, how much it's gonna cost me to get it re reinstated. Okay, now. I still work on the most current switches, but my bad, I let it slide, okay? I sit back on my bottom and said, well, I can do this other stuff. I don't have to do that anymore. And then now I find myself, maybe I need to go do that. So never, never let yourself uh, trade water, always swim. I, again, I'm a division director for Robert Half, and so most of the consultants or resources that come in through me um, aren't coming to work for Robert Half, but through Robert Half to one of my uh, one of my clients, and and uh, we talked to him about uh, interviewing, and we do as much prep work on that as possible, and and so many times I get uh, resources that that get done with the interviews, and. And I'll ask them, hey, did you have a chance to talk about a career path or growth within the organization? And uh, many times they tell me, well, no, or they might be even afraid to ask the question because it might look like they were less interested in the job they were interviewing for and, uh, and, and moving up. So they want to they hold back and, and make sure that the company knows they're inter interested in, in that. And you know, from my perspective, I'm thinking, man, if I, if I asked about uh, a career path or growth and the, and the company said, well, we want you to be focused on this and we don't think you'd be moving up anywhere, then I, you know, I don't know if I want to work for a company like that. So I'd rather find that out now than, than you know, move on and, uh, and take that job. And six months down the road, I'm getting in the car and I just hate going to work. And, um, and so, you know, I'd encourage that not only does it, does it make it uh, look like you're more interested in, uh, in the organization and, uh, and what happens and, uh, and that you're going to have tenure in the organization because you want to know how you can grow with the company, um, but also those, uh, those peripheral technologies that might be just outside your current role that might interest you. Uh, like you mentioned, if, you talk, if you're touching servers, you might, you might know Unix or Linux, and, and that might be of interest, and those might be responsibilities that you could, that you could pick up. And, uh, and if you're coming in to try to get your foot in the door and those things interest you, that's kind of how you grow into those new roles. And if you don't know about them ahead of time, it's tough to keep your head up or keep your eye open to, to know when to, when to pick those off. And there's a lot of times in jobs where you're just trying to stay in your lanes, and, uh, and I'd, I'd kind of want to know what else I could touch what other responsibilities I could I could pick up to either grow in a new role or grow into a bigger paycheck. Mm -hmm. One of the really important things that I, I would like to share with you guys that if you learn nothing else, this is one of the most important things I've learned in my career. Um, a bigger paycheck doesn't necessarily come from what you know. I, I, I can't emphasize that enough. You can be dizzy with as many certifications as you possibly could have, but where your bigger paycheck comes from is your social style. If you can get along with others and you can inspire and lead others, I can guarantee you in your lifetime you will make double or triple 
what you ever thought you could. I, personally, I'm an example of that. I had no idea I could make this much money. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I, and I'm, I'm not saying that to be uh, a joke. It's, it's all about whether you would inspire others to want to follow you, and can others then take the vision that you set and allow them the technical know-how to deliver on a mission. You know, a, a, a great mentor of mine years ago, he said, Matt, Matt what do you have to do? And I said, oh, I gotta, you know, blah, 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 I gotta, I gotta build this, this, this infrastructure component has to bridge across here, and then you gotta merge this in, we got 12 million of these to do this, you know, I just dizzied him with technology garbo. He said, so, what you're, what you're telling me is you need to build a boat. <laughs> I said, I'm pretty sure I didn't mention boat. <laughs> <laughs> Were you listening? <laughs> he goes, no, no, no. What you need to do is build a boat. In order for you to build a boat, can you build a boat? I said, no, I'm not a shipwright. I'm not sure I can build a boat. He said, great. Then we both agree. You're not the man for the job. I said, yeah, that's true. And so now I'm in despair. I can't build a boat. He goes, what you need to do is inspire others with a vision to yearn for distant shores. And if you can get others to yearn for those distant shores, they will build the boat. That's what you have to do. And when you work, if you're just getting out of college, don't think that you're just the guy or the gal who has to run around and, and just follow. I would say absorb as much as you possibly can. But we recently hired a gentleman. He's literally three years out of college. And wow, he's a rising star. He is so fastly rising because of his tenacity and his attitude. He's, he's, um, he moved within nine months of being in, in his role from a, a, a level one application developer to a level two application developer. His boss just recently resigned and we are moving him into an interim lead role because of that kind of tenacity. Now, so you're talking about somebody and if you want to know about, about dollars, let me tell you. Entry level for the application development role that I had him at was $70,000 per year. I moved him from $70,000 to 95,000 and his new role will be more at 125. The, the guy, these are, these are opportunities at your, your guys' fingertips right now, today. It's, it's out there for the, for the taking. And, and to this gentleman's point earlier, when we talk about getting along with people, it's all about getting along. There is no, you know, one of the things that we've always had in IT, and Ann, Ann can uh, attest to this because we had some good conversations, is this <coughs> us and them. So say he's application development and I'm infrastructure. Something breaks. It's his problem. <laughs> my stuff's working great. <laughs> and he goes, I don't know. My stuff's working great. It's his problem. And it's a blame game. I don't know about everybody else, but I'm pretty sure my paycheck comes from the same company that his paycheck comes. <laughs> and, and I'm pretty sure the company is suffering right now. And if you take the attitude today and you make it a part of your own mission to say, you know what? You're right. We're all in this together. Now, I served on submarines for 10 years. Five full years of my life I've spent underwater. And when you shut those watertight hatches and you go underwater, <coughs> you're all on that boat together. <laughs> there's, there's nobody bailing you out. And these are the things that I learned from my life lessons that I'm able to tell you today. Don't be one of those IT guys who blames somebody else. Be the IT guy who stands and says, hey, I couldn't figure anything out on my side. What do you got? Let me sit down. Yeah? No? Okay, well, let me go check the log files on my systems, and I'll go s figure it out. And you're, you're collaborating. And now, the, now my rap Robert Half buddy over here, he's going, man, I kind of like working with that guy. And as soon as that happens over and over again, 
you'll be promoted and promoted and promoted and promoted until you're you're blue in the face. Stop giving me money. <laughs> <laughs> what should people look for in an organization as they are considering positions, or what are your thoughts on that? One of the biggest buzzwords that you'll hear right now is work-life balance. Um, I think that means different things to different people. So um, that's something to keep in mind is does the organization fit your lifestyle? Um, what does your lifestyle entail? Does it have the same values, the same culture that you're looking for and that you can see yourself working at that organization for a long time? Um, you can ask probably every one of us at the table and everybody will have a different input based on their own experiences and the company that they are employed with. But um, I would definitely say with State Farm, that's one of the biggest things is just having that work-life balance and having a mutual um, understanding of the culture and the values um, as the organization you're employed with. You know, what's your gut feel from talking to these company representatives? Does it seem like it would be a fit or not, you know? It means a big, big thing when you that gut feel. When you're in that interview, is it feeling right or is it not? And don't just take the job because the pay is great or the this or that. And what are you know, ask the questions, what are the typical work hours? What what do I have what's that what you what are you gonna expect of me? Are you gonna expect seventy hours a week? Ask that. <clears throat> or you know, or not. And what are the all those things? Um, Katie mentioned work life balance. It's a huge State Farm is very much, I wanted to um, kind of go back a little bit to the culture and the philosophies. State Farm is very much a family organization. Lots of multiple generations of people uh, within families work at State Farm. And like uh, my daughter works at State Farm. Um, lots of people have husband and wife and kids end up there and grandkids. Very much a family uh, environment and family organization. We believe strongly in work-life balance. So think about those things, but also then there's the longevity and the stability of the company. Maybe you love the exciting startup mentality and you'd really love to get in with a startup company and the fact that it's maybe not too stable and they're just getting started excites you and that's great if that does. If you want some, you know, a company that's been around longer that offers, you know, pensions and has a long history of things, then you'd look at a bigger company like State Farm. But those are all things you have to decide and you have to really know how's this company fit with my personal lifestyle. Do you have kids? Do you have little kids and you know you want to be home at night to um, go to their soccer games? You don't want to be on the phone all night long solving problems with you know customers? Then know that a customer business isn't really for you. So all those things I think you have to think about whenever you, and you know again, when you're talking to each of us, Ask us, you know, what's, the, what's life like? What's a day in the life at State Farm for an IT person? Social uh, networking, I'm going to start. Maybe, John, you want to address this. How is your company using social networking on the web to recruit IT talent? Really answer that we're not using social media to recruit. Oh, you're not This wasn't all. the best <laughs> person to ask that question. Yeah, so, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Without me, all right? <laughs> I, I, yeah, social media, I guess, well, maybe a good uh, question to uh, make it applicable is how we use it in the um, interview process. Okay. It's pretty imperative that you have a pretty clean social media profile. Um, this is where I was wanting to go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so then we do. Thank you for leaving. <laughs> no problem. But yeah, you know, we hired someone about three, four weeks ago, got about 40, 45 resumes, um, pulled out about 18 that I thought I would want to call, potentially interview. And I actually, I Google every person that uh, before we interview them. And so I look at their LinkedIn profile, I look at if they have a Twitter account, obviously there's a great chance they'll have a Facebook profile. So out of those 18, after looking at their Facebook profile, I went down to three. Oh, wow. And, uh, and you can call it, you know, that we shouldn't label, but we do label. Oh, sure. And so when I see a profile that's a very scandalous picture of a female, um, of, of themselves, you know, it's, it's probably not a good fit. Well, it's like a, yeah, the culture thing. Yeah, yeah. The culture, <laughs> culture, yes. You know, and then we know it's, it's okay what you do on the weekends, but if you're looking to be hired, you might want to choose what you do on the weekends and what you post uh, on your profile mm -hmm. because it will come into play. Uh, because I, you know, people when I tell this, like, well, that's my personal time. Well, it's my <coughs> money I'm about to pay you. And so if I need to worry about you being hung over or you, you go on vacation too much, or um, if you, you post all the different problems you have, 
I, that's great. I'll let someone else take the risk of investing their money into you. Okay. Uh, there are multiple times where people will just not make it. And they won't make it because of social media that they have out on the web. Whether it's their own websites, whether it's Facebook, you just won't get the play. If you're a party guy or a party girl, and you have a picture of one tequila, two tequila, three tequila floor, <laughs> no, nobody, nobody's gonna be hiring you. I, I mean, I'm just letting you know. And if you are lucky enough to get a job, another thing is uh, watch, about, uh, watch about what you post. Because if you're a whiner, I'm personally not a big fan of whiners. <laughs> And, and what I mean by whining is that if everything they say is uh, the cup is half empty in, in everything that they do, then they're going to bring that to the, the, the team. And, and they're going to disrupt a positive culture that I've built. And, and that's not good. So already you're on a short string. right? But, but it's worse than that. If I'm seeing you post things that are negative, then what happens that one weekend where we're all in on a weekend trying to do a major release and you're not happy because you had to work 24 hours in one weekend. That's a lot of hours in one weekend, but sometimes that happens in IT. And, and <coughs> so you decide on Facebook to gripe about my company or me because you're a uh, you're, you're one of those kind of people who likes to air their dirty laundry for everybody else. Now you're doing reputational harm mm -hmm. to the organization who is paying you. I can guarantee <coughs> a one ticket free ride out there. The things that are, that are monitoring, it's little watchdogs that are monitoring all kinds of things, <coughs> not just companies, but uh, I know Oracle uh, acquired a product right now. Um, and you put out, uh, you know, on social media that, uh, man, you know, cussing and, and really having a hard time getting the cell phone activated, right? If, if that cell phone company, AT&T, let's say, is a, is a, is a member of, of right now, then they automatically get a feed, the profile pulls up, and they proactively call you. So that's going to, that's going to, that's going to customers alike. There's so much that gets... Most of you guys know that once it's digital, like it's it's out there. If, if someone's smart enough, they can find it. Um, I, I kind of look at it another way. Not only watch watch what you post, but uh, I was interviewing a sales guy probably about a month ago, and uh, he said, you know, five years experience. We're actually looking for someone a little little younger, probably somebody just out of college that we could train, have the kind of the, the technical tenacity to to figure things out. And, uh, and so I said, no problem, go out to LinkedIn. I pulled him up and said, hey, is this how you spell your last name? Kind of want to see what he looked like. It was on the phone. And, uh, and he said, yeah, yeah. And I said, okay, I, you know, are you, uh, did you, you live in Arizona? And he's like, no, no, I've always been in Dallas. And I said, oh, okay. I wasn't finding you on LinkedIn. And he's like, oh, I don't have a LinkedIn profile. And I was thinking, oh, man, okay. I, I use LinkedIn like Facebook. I, Facebook is like my family repository. I keep my kids' pictures there and all that good stuff. I don't do a lot of active posting. I, you know, I don't make political comments or anything like that. And um, So I'm not a very active uh, Facebook person, but I, I'm shocked they haven't kicked me off of LinkedIn yet. And uh, I, I actively use it. And, uh, and so from a sales perspective, uh, meeting a sales guy that uh, yeah, he could have been the best sales guy ever, but uh, meeting a sales guy or a business professional that didn't have uh, didn't have LinkedIn and wasn't using that for some sort of uh, you know the networking capability, I I just that that didn't I was a little confused on, on why that would on why that would be and and so kind of kind of raised an eyebrow. Just curious with you guys, would it make you nervous if they didn't have a LinkedIn profile or, I, I or have Twitter to see a picture? Okay, I teach courses on LinkedIn. It, it's it's social media for adults in the business world. And uh, it's pretty imperative. It's your one digital asset that you get to keep. So when you go work for State Farm, and for some reason they let you go, they take your email, they take your contacts, they, they take all your endorsements, your testimonials, but whatever you do with that, uh, your LinkedIn profile, that's your digital asset that you get to take. That's what recruiters are looking for. Right? We have multiple people that I know that are, are recruiters, and they really just are on LinkedIn, and they're looking at those profiles. And it's pretty imperative that you beef that up because it's what you'll have from the next 10, 20, 30 years. Called to check a reference on this one consultant and uh, 
the, uh, the, the owner of the company said, uh, yeah, you know, the work ethic wasn't there, wasn't on time, just really, you know, really some things went south. I said, was that why I got, you know, is that why he, he left or got let go? And I didn't really know why he, why he had moved on. And, and, uh, and he, he said, uh, and he said, well, no, not, not exactly. We don't like to disclose that, that kind of information, but, uh, but you know, we, it, it, we decided it was probably both for the best, best for the both of us if we just part, part away. So I called the consultant and said, uh, you know, hey, talk to one of your references, and uh, it didn't, didn't come back glowing, so what was the, what was the situation? He said, yeah, um, you know, he was, I, I wish I would have known you were gonna call him. Uh, he was really salty when I, when I left. Uh, he, wasn't, he wasn't happy, I really put him in a bind. I gave him a two-week notice, but he wasn't happy about that either. And, uh, and I said, ah, okay, well, I had two conflicting stories, and he goes, he endorsed me on, on LinkedIn. Look at his look at the review. They left me on LinkedIn. I go out to his LinkedIn, and sure enough, the owner of the company had left a positive review on his on his deal, talking about the good work he had done like three months prior. And I was like, that works for me. So yeah. just so maybe he probably was he probably was salty that the that the guy left, and and that happens. And and just like he said, you know, they can take every thing away, but uh, some of those things just sit and build and, and create a, a digital footprint for you that really speaks volumes to um, where you go and the kind of work that you've done, um, whether it's short term, long term, um, it can really uh, put some uh, put a, a, a profile around someone that we're just kind of viewing a resume, it looks like they have the skill sets, but we're trying to figure out are they punctual, do they have the work ethic, would they get along with the other team members, and then you see all of these endorsements and references on their on their LinkedIn or other places and it's like okay it's probably a guy I want to I want to call um, I don't ask for it but even folks who list it out and they just have the references already listed on their resume all the way uh, four listed with names and phone numbers and like all right I can just I can call Matt anytime and, and check a reference okay this guy must be doing pretty good work if he's just going to have him listed anytime on his on his on his resume, and, and typically I like to give them a heads up that I'm going to call somebody so they can let them know. But uh, but you know usually that, that'll really if I've got 13 or 15 or 30 candidates that I'm weeding out and and they all look equivalent, that's going to help me narrow down uh, or throw a few out if uh, if I've got some that have that and others that don't. Well, those words are very wise. I think the one challenge I would say is there's some. Sadly, I get reports every morning on uh, the malicious logic and the damage to the world organization because of malware that's happening around us every day. And, and there's social, um, be careful on what you post on the web because people will take on your persona and they'll be you. If you post too much of you, then you start losing you to criminals. So just be careful of that. And I think LinkedIn does a, a really good job of keeping it just to the things that are really critical, or really to the point that he was making. Uh, I, I would be very cautious of giving too much information uh, out specifically because of all of the new hacking techniques that are out there. We can go into details, but no, it's not here. What are the signs that you should move on and find new employment elsewhere? If your manager meets with you and they have HR with you, with them, I'm being serious. Typically, if if the manager is meeting with you, if you're having a one-on-one -on -one and they're giving you a heads up, hey, you know things are not going so well, blah blah blah, take that as valuable criticism and change. However. If a manager comes in, had, has had the conversation with you three times, and this time they have HR witness the conversation, look for a different job. You're gone 90 days tops. You'll be pipped and out. Just letting you know. A good friend, he was in banking well, for about 12 years, but he's working for the same company for the last seven, and he got let go, and uh, I was trying to help him out beef up his LinkedIn profile. And I was very disappointed to find out that the last seven years he'd been doing one thing, you know, and he just was comfortable. He was, he was. <laughs> you know, he, he moved the iPad and he, he was comfortable getting the five percent raise every year. Five percent. Wow. Well, wow. but uh, you need to worry that in you know in seven years 
what they were paying you before, they can find someone else that can work for that pay. And so if, if, if you've been doing the same thing for five, seven years, just understand, remember what they used to pay you? Well, guess what? Someone's graduating and they're willing to start off there also. Yeah. So make sure if you're not developing a new skill set, uh, I would be very cautious to say it's time to get out of there. You know, I, I just like to be completely visible about things. I, I took a, a job one time for the money and uh, and it was a, I had a really great salary and then once I got in I realized these practices that they said they had weren't quite as developed as they had told me they were. And I was thinking, crap, I gotta build this from scratch. And so I brought a, a bunch of deals to the table and um, and we didn't we didn't win any we didn't bid on any of them because we couldn't pull everything together to uh, um, to uh, pull quotes and, and do what it took to to win the bids and and so uh, it, it was about six months in and I, I was really frustrated and uh, I knew if I was frustrated my boss had to be frustrated and uh, and so he lived out of state and he flew in and uh, when he got in we we had a we had a meeting and walked in the first thing I said is I'm frustrated you've got to be frustrated what what's going on here's what I have and uh, and we had a really open conversation about it. He told me about changes that were uh, that were coming down in the business that were above his head. Um, told me about some things that uh, that may or may not be affected. And at the end of that conversation, I said, uh, "Do I need to start looking for a new job?" And uh, and he said, "I I, I don't think so, but I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep you posted on what's going on." Well, all I needed was the "I don't think so," and I'm, I'm starting to build my I'm starting to build my contingency plan, and, and I, I just decide that I would rather be up front and have a professional conversation with my with my boss or my bosses about where we are, if this is working for me and how it's working for them, and be very upfront to know where I stand in the organization and how things are going, than to hide in my office behind a telephone or a computer or whatever, and then one day the hatchet comes down and then it's like, oh, what could I have done? They fired me and like, I'm the victim now. I just prefer be proactive about things. Um, even if I didn't get didn't feel like I got a fair shake on the deal. At least I'm being proactive on on where I'm at and how things are working for for both sides and figuring out do I need to start looking elsewhere. And it's really important. He did he didn't say the words, but it's important that that we understand what he was talking about. It's integrity and trust. If you can show your employer integrity and trust and have the the willingness to lay that out, you rise in their eyes. It's absolutely amazing how the the, the social aspect of, of you being um, very open and, and, and walking in a line of integrity and, and lock, walking in line with trust, letting down your guard and allowing them to see that, it, it's an amazing transformation that will occur. And, and it happened here as a great example. If there's anything that I could leave with you today is whatever you're doing in your career, make sure that you're happy in it and that you have a passion for it. You could pay me $150,000, but if I get up every morning and get in my truck and say, I hate my job, I hate my job, $150,000 a year is not worth it. Make sure you have your passion, your desire. Of course, your skills come with this, but part I want to encourage is have that passion and have that love for what you do because life is short and part of it comes happiness if i know you're happy doing your job and i know you're coming to work and you like being there and you like what you do we are going to be a productive team in our company and for our clients so it's a balance they talked about work-life balance it's also that balance of happiness what you bring with it so that you your vibe and your energy is positive and happy and you enjoy doing what you're doing it's never stop learning never ever ever stop learning in the in the army I was in the army uh, we had things called the left hand left range fan right range fan okay know your limits but know what's on your left and know what's on your right okay that, that I, in fact, I was trying to look at, at always know what's out there, okay? I have a whole chest full of those, but it doesn't mean anything now, okay? When I go see him for a job, 
he may say thank you for your service, but we don't wear our medals when we're, when we're in the civilian world, okay? It's like, what have you done lately? What do you know? And what are you gonna do? So add that to make sure you enjoy what you're doing. It's pretty imperative that you're always learning on the job and learning new skill sets. You need to be a hybrid because if you only have one skill set, you have a few certificates, that really doesn't do much. Um, I mean, some of the biggest ones I think of is communication skills. It's amazing if for some of these or certificates they mentioned, you can get probably 40, 70 people that have the certificate, and the moment we go, let's see their communication skills, it just cuts it down, I mean, by 80%. It's amazing how poor people's communication skills are, and so you should always be improving those. Um, because that's something we can work around. We can improve. So if you can talk on the phone and then be able to talk uh, that technical skill, that's a huge asset, at least in our company, I would assume in many others. We haven't talked much about the hiring though, so maybe let me just give you one quick set of advice here for me. When I come in, certifications get you in the door. They're important, education's super important. They, but all they do is they get you in the door. When somebody comes in and meets with me, I wanna know that, that somebody is learning that somebody has done more than what's standard required of them. And you have to show that somehow. If you can show that in your resume, great. If you can show that in an online portfolio, great. If you don't have an online portfolio, I, you know, that just to me, just, I don't know. To me, you need to have some sort of online presence that shows off who you are, that makes you different. But when you get in and meet with me, I need to know that you've been learning more. I need to know that you're doing more than just the standard stuff. Um, if I have someone come in and they just give me their classes and I say, okay, show me a website that you've worked on and they show me all the classwork they did when they're taking classes, I'm like, well, great. They know how to do an HTML site. They have no real world knowledge. They've never applied anything that they've done here. And we hire a lot of entry level people. Um, you know, our company is, we really hire a lot of entry level people and, and I don't want to see just the work you've done in school. I want to see you've applied that in some sort of way. So do your best to apply that so that when you come in, I can see it and you know, that's gonna give you a whole lot better chance than so many others that don't apply it, so. Seize the day. This is your moment, guys. Th this is the time where you get to, to go into the workforce and decide who you wanna be. And what's really interesting is you can hide, you can find those IT groups that will hide behind IT's wall. There's this invisible wall that exists between business and IT. If I were to give you some really critical advice at this moment, I would say don't allow that wall to exist. Step beyond it. Reach out to your business partners. If, if, it's, if it's Robert Half and, and uh, they're in sales, learn sales. You'll be a much better effective IT person supporting sales if you know what they need. And here's what's really interesting. This is the big shocker is um, IT people spend their lives learning about IT. Business people spend their lives learning about whatever focused business they're in, whether that's marketing, finance, what have you. If you can take a moment out of your IT life and spend a moment in marketing or spend a moment in the life of somebody else, they don't know the power of IT and the power of automation that you can bring but you do, and you can make those recommendations. You wanna be a superstar right away? You wanna know how that gentleman that I was just talking about earlier, he doesn't spend his time in IT. He spends his time learning the business and then applying IT to it. Do it. Along with, um, you know, if they don't hire, if can, uh, companies don't hire entry level folks, you know, what, what's the advice you might, you, might, uh, you might give us, and we kind of skipped over some of that, but uh, it's, be hungry. I, I interview candidates every day and, and people come in and and, uh, and some of the most senior folks <clears throat> shock me to come in and they don't have anything to write with and it's like, man, what if we start going over something? What if we start asking questions? What if I ask you to whiteboard something? There's not a whiteboard in here and, and so you can't, even, you can't even draw anything out. Just kind of like, you know, laid back in the chair and, and I'm thinking, man, that's, that's not going to work for me and I don't know if I want to put this guy in front of the client and then I got these young guys that come in and uh, and you know they might, you can tell they might have you know tattoo sleeves, but they're covered up, and and, and they just and they just stay on me. You know what what can I do? What can I learn? Where can I go? Uh, can you get me? Robert Half has this uh, skills port where you can go out and you can pick up these uh, these things that maybe you need to brush up on because you haven't done it in a while. And and, uh, and some of those guys that uh, that I felt like were probably the 
worst candidates in terms of experience are the guys that I ended up placing because they would just stay after me and try to figure out how to make themselves relevant. And, uh, and so often you get no a couple of times and you start to lose your, your luster and you start to lose your zeal and, and the rejection never feels good and, and then you kind of just want the easy spot and then generally that'll be like taking a job that you don't love or for less money or whatever the case and, and that's not going to work. That's not going to work either. So I would just say be hungry and, and whatever you're doing, if you're interviewing, if it's an entry level position, figure out a way to make yourself relevant to, to that company. And, and typically for me, that's trying to figure out something I really like about the company that's relevant to me, and then regurgitating that back on how I would fit into the organization. And that really resonates to an interviewer that one, I've done my research and I know about the company, but two, this is where I think I'll fit in, and, uh, and this is why I like the company, this is why I'd like to work there. And uh, you pull that all in in a 30, 45 minute or an hour interview, it, it usually lives a, a, leaves a pretty good impression when you're, when you're walking out the door. The number one advice that I would give you is hone your soft skills. You've heard some of these guys talk about different soft skills and communication, but I heard a great quote. We were actually at a Dallas Regional Chamber meeting, and <coughs> I can't remember who gave the quote, but it said, we hire for hard skills, and we fire because of lack of soft skills. And these guys would probably agree that 90% of people that get terminated from companies is because of their soft skills. They know, you guys know the, you know, you know technology, you'll know the technical aspects of your work, but how do you communicate? How do you work with teams? What's your emotional intelligence? How confident are, confident are you in meetings? How are you getting up in front of a group and giving a presentation? Um, you know, soft skills, once you're in that job, those soft skills are so important. And so if, if you're not confident, if you don't feel like your soft skills are real strong, Work on them. Ask somebody. You know, see if you can find classes. Go online, research. Um, so I thought that quote was really. When I heard that, I was like, that is 100 percent true. Mm -hmm. I can think even personally, <coughs> friends that have been terminated from State Farm, and State Farm doesn't terminate people easily. But the friends that I know that have been terminated, it's not because they didn't know their job. It's all soft skill related. Show an initiative, kind of know as a big picture where you want to be, what your goals are, whether it's within that organization, a different organization, however that plays out, show initiative in your work. Be transparent of um, not getting comfortable in your current role. Like you said, you never want to spend seven years just moving the iPad. You want to keep yourself relevant and just showing that initiative to your leadership and to your peers of where you want to be, what your goals are, and the things that you are eager to learn. I just wanted to say thank you and thank you everybody for coming.